In today's video, I want to share one of the most important distinctions I have made recently. It is a discovery. It's something that until recently, I think I was underweighting. And I believe this is a very important framework to understand reality, to understand yourself, to understand why you want the things you want. And unless you spend time thinking about this, I think your life will be poor for it. So I hope you'll follow me along with this one. Now, I want to give credit to this recent distinction to a new book I read recently, a book that I love. And this is a book called Wanting by Luke Burgess. Now, this book covers René Girard, who is a somewhat obscure French philosopher who was professor at Stanford and as such became an influence on a number of Silicon Valley muckety mucks. And Gerard was known for his theory, uh, a philosophy called mimetic theory. And there are a number of facets to it. I'm not gonna focus on all of them today, but the one that I wanna focus on is that we don't desire things in and of themselves. We often desire things in life because we find someone who becomes a model to us. We see what the model wants. And then because we want to be similar to whoever it is we're looking to as a model, we then pursue the object, but it's not really about the object. So that's a little abstract. So here's what this might look like that we might decide you want to run a million dollar training gym and you decide your head, that's your goal. And ostensibly that's your object. But really what's happening is you are modeling someone, perhaps yours truly, that you know has a seven figure training gym. And it's not so much about the goal, it's about your attempt to model someone that you are now looking up to. And premise that all of our desires are merely attempts to imitate models in the world around us has, I think, a number of intriguing and potentially somewhat disconcerting distinctions. I think we need to really noodle on here. And for me, I'll share with you something that really came up for me. I was reading this book because this was intuitive once I, I read it this way. I was a little familiar with Gerard's work already. Uh, Naval Ravikant, who a lot of you might be familiar with, who is a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, investor, and philosopher, uh, referenced Gerard's mimetic theory. So I was familiar with the broad strokes, but to me, when I really had to get honest with myself, how much many of the things I was writing in my diligent dear yearly and quarterly goal setting processes, which to be clear, I think are very valuable. I, I think we should all probably have these processes. It became very clear to me that I wasn't sure that I really want those things or am I just looking at people around me and then thinking that I should want those things because they seem to want those things. And I will offer an exercise here that I think could potentially be very illuminating for you. Now, crudely in the book, uh, the author makes two types of models that we use when we're deciding what it is we want in our life. And it draws the tactical name for these models are your external mediator and your internal mediator. Now, Luke Burgess in his book gave us, I think, the more slightly intuitive name, Fresh Manistan versus Celebristan. And in Celebristan, that is the external mediator. So this might be when you look up to someone like Batman. You look up to Batman, but they're far away. They're not in your world. They're not, they don't really represent a rival for you. It can just purely be someone you look to as a model, maybe a hero, and that can inform what it is that you want. Now, this isn't necessarily going to be good or bad. It just means that because this external mediator, this individual celebrity stand is not in your world, they don't really function as a rival. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, you have what you are recall internal mediators, or in the book, Burge refers to this land as freshmanistan, because as freshman in college, it is the ultimate medic, medic environment where we're constantly asking ourselves, who am I? What should I want? Who should I be? And there's someone that you could potentially not only be inspired by, but there might be an element of rivalry. There might be an element of envy. There might be an element of, I want it because they want it. And these types of models are people that are in our world. They're in our social milieu. Then this really set me down a weird rabbit hole of the past. Oh, entire time I did like that about times where I realized, wow, sometimes particularly like personal relationships, Many of the personal relationships, both for myself and in just even observing people's reactions to me or people's reactions to each other, there were a number of times where friendships had elements of both supporting each other, but also elements of rivalry and envy that 
Again, I don't think it's, I'm, to be clear, I'm not saying that's necessarily a problem or wrong thing, which is something we want to be cognizant of because my takeaway for you is this. Here's what I want you to take away from this video, which is you should choose your heroes, choose your models wisely because life can trick you. And the nature of our society, particularly at current with these beautiful, ubiquitous phones that we all carry around in our pocket all the time and platforms like social media, specifically Instagram, it is very easy for us to get caught up in this rat race of models that we didn't choose intentionally, we kind of fell into. And then we find ourselves thinking like, should I want that? Should I, should, is there something wrong with me? I don't have that car. Should I want that car? I guess I want that car too. Okay, everyone else wants that car. And we want to be very thoughtful about this. Now, the thing I want to offer is if anybody's watching this, the one warning sign that I give you is if you're saying to yourself, well, that's not me. That, that's not me at all. I'm not, I'm not persuadable that way. You're in a lot of trouble. You're the most vulnerable to this. You have to be very, very careful. Regardless of whether you think you are or you aren't, one thing I think you would all benefit from doing is taking some time and quite literally, and I did this exercise, it was very interesting. You want to make a list of all the people you look to in your life as models. And I would encourage you use this framework, right? Make a list of your external mediators of people that are heroes, but you don't feel they're in your world. People you look up to as mentors, people you don't know personally, people that you read books about. These could be celebrities, these could be historical figures. And ask yourself, what is it about that individual that has you drawn to them? Then I would encourage you to do the same exercise, but now I want you to identify what are the models in your current life, in your social life, or in fresh Manistan, as birders would call them. What are those models? Who are the people in your life that you are emulating, the people that you admire? And this is where it's important, be real honest, the people that you have envy around, the people you feel some rivalry towards. Because again, competition is not an issue in of itself. I think as always, one of my life heuristic is that the core challenge we're into is when we're unaware of these things, where we are being unconscious. So I think if you look at this list and you get very honest, particularly if you're really honest about the people you look to as rivals, I think it could tell you a lot about how you are currently steering the ship of your life. Because if we're not intentional about this, and this was, I think, why this book was so revelatory, is there were a number of things that maybe I do want all of these things I've written down on my 10 year plan. And I think, frankly, I probably do, but I just want to be honest with myself about how that desire was created. I think our still goals, I'm just finding myself being introspective, I'm asking like, do I really want that? Is it just like, a, do I really want that thing? Uh, and again, it's okay. I don't want to be intentional about it because the final thing that I'll offer that was, I thought very powerful about this book is one should consider living your life as if you are responsible for other people's desires. Live your life as if you are responsible for other people's desires, because just as you will be impacted by the mimetic models of the people around you, you are doing the same for other people. And by the things that you choose to desire, how you're expressing your values in the goals that you choose, in the manner that you pursue your goals, you are impacting the people around you in ways that potentially are helpful or potentially unhelpful. Because with every encounter, you're helping other people want more, you're helping them want less, or you're helping them want differently. So that's it, I wanna give a shout out. Again, this is the book, Wanting, highly recommend it, Luke Burgess. And if you enjoyed this book review, I would love for you to go ahead, sign up, subscribe, like, and do all the things. I would be so honored to have an opportunity to help you make more impact, have more take home income, and create more happiness with your trading gym. through actionable strategies, psychological frameworks, and philosophy.